You've been getting a lot of screen time lately. My screen time. Now you listen to me. This right here says I can do whatever I want. Is that a fact? Well, Big Daddy says otherwise. Whew, this isn't over, not by a long shot. Focus. Yeah. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. And it's another week in toys. It's another week. It's <laughs> a lot of stuff happening, but you know what? I'm just here to talk about toys. I'm sure you hear enough of all the other goings on everywhere else. This is our hobby. This is our escape. This is our time to be sitting on the internet ordering way too many toys. Damn eBay and Amazon making it too easy. And even though shipping may be slow, it may be next month before I get some of the stuff I've ordered, but at the same time, it's almost that check out i have the toy secured so that means i have the toy i have something i may not have it in my hands yet which is the best part but it's there it's on its way it's mine out in the ether can you tell i'm ready to get out to a convention or just hang out with somebody I, I, I need to talk toys with people but something just to whet the appetite a little bit something we've seen in lots of pictures lots of reviews but there's just something about seeing a digital render or a prototype in all gray that just mm, 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 mm. here is the hasbro gi joe classified series snake eyes in all of its grayscale glory this is courtesy of long tom fusher double dealer who actually sculpted the damn thing it's like oh man i remember you back in the day we used to talk about making customs and stuff and now that's big time, baby. If you missed out on the Hasbro Pulse exclusive deluxe edition, it's heavily rumored that this is gonna be in wave one, along with Scarlet and Duke and Roadblock and Destro. I hope so because I need another one for the kitchen and my office and the desk in the other room and well, the desk in the other room and just keep right beside the review space and one for the bathtub. That's right, I said bathtub, rub-a-dub. Now we've already seen the full solicitation for the Tamashi Nation's SH Figuarts 1989 Batman and it's looking cool, it's looking great, but this week, or well, maybe it was last week, losing time, Bandai posted kind of a little turnaround video of the figure. Not the most exciting or flattering look at it, but it gives us kind of an idea of what it looks like out from the studio, all the mood lighting and stuff. This is probably closer to what it'll actually look like in hand. And I didn't mute the sound on this, this is how it was presented. <laughs> this is how it was posted. Nah, this isn't awkward at all. Let's go ahead and do this for another couple seconds together, you and me. All right. It was just last week that we were talking about the sliding schedule for the Medicom Mafex line, where they've pushed several back. You know, this is usual with Mafex, but everything that's going on, it's getting pushed even more. I even went as far as saying that I wouldn't be surprised if they went ahead and pushed the Mafex Marvel Comics X-Men Cyclops back even further. It had already been pushed from the first of the year to this month. But somebody within Medicom must have seen that and said, you know what, Robo, how would you shut the hell up? Cyclops is releasing this month. Here's an official announcement. How you like damn apples? And that's okay because, ooh, I like them apples. On their site, they posted that the official release date is April 11th, and I thought, okay, let's do this. And just last night, Ami Ami sent me a payment request. I paid it, and now I'm patiently waiting. Patiently. Despite its arm problems, which I actually did fix, but never shot just because of everybody. Figure socks! <laughs> and then the oddball blue parts here and there. It'll be nice to get Cyclops to go with Wolverine because, you know, they are best friends. Now with this, will we see more X-Men in the Mafex line come along? Or is it going to be all movie and DC? Batman. <laughs> Batman's taking up the whole schedule. Last week, it was kind of cool to skim the surface, at least, for Mattel's WWE reveals that were supposed to happen at WrestleMania. I usually ignore it because there's just so much and I don't collect the line, but... I, I probably should at least talk about it because I keep track of wrestling. But to keep the reveals going, last weekend Mattel went ahead and showed their WWE Ultimates Series 6 with Charlotte and The Rock. The Ultimates theme here comes into play with the accessories. Comes with two fists, two grips, 
to it doesn't matter hands to just bring it hands a championship belt brahma bull shirt microphone sunglasses the people's eyebrow head the la 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 head and then the age-old smolder not bad for a premium figure but <laughs> comparatively speaking it makes charlotte's figure seem a little bit bare either she got the short end of the stick or they are uh, accounting for costume design on the body or they haven't finished her accessories yet i mean no various title belts that she's held no big peacock cape I, yeah she's shown with a couple of alternate hands and then two heads but there's also one more head that she could have Woo! well hmm. Woo! Woo! again maybe more accessories will be announced later and this wave does come before the NWO Hulk Hogan they revealed last week. He is Series 7. Here's something I had my doubts about, kind of about concept, but mostly about timing. But it wasn't until the McFarlane Toys, uh, what's it called, the remastered original Spawn Kickstarter actually started that I went, well, all right, okay. It was still a bit confusing when I first started scrolling down through the information and such, but then I thought back to Toy Fair when they showed the unarticulated sculpt for Spawn, and then they didn't really have a plan in place, it seemed like. Well, Todd has this idea, let's do an homage to that original Spawn figure, and then put it on Kickstarter. Other than that, there wasn't a lot of details. Just a boy with a sculpt and an idea. But looking over the Kickstarter itself, it has several options. The first one is, of course, Spawn in his classic look with the black and the white and the red and the big cape that folds just like the original. <laughs> I don't know how it folds. Mm. Then there's the modern version that takes the red out of the torso for that kind of sleeker, well, modern look, to say it again. But this figure includes what Todd is calling the shoestring head. The artist-proof version is essentially the classic figure, but all in gray. And as we've already established earlier in this video, I'm a sucker for that kind of thing. Each of these options are $40 a piece, but if you want to upgrade to a McFarlane autograph and I think an extra weapon, those are $80 a piece. If you opt for a three pack of all the options together, you also get a bonus Al Simmons head for the classic and the modern, that means it's painted, or a screaming head that is gray like the artist proof. And I'm guessing the painted heads all swap between each other, so if you want to take shoestring, put it on classic, Al on the modern, just all around. My confusion came into play with all the pictures showing that original unarticulated sculpt. Right off the bat, I thought, oh, it's such an homage to that original figure that he even went with the same articulation scheme, just some cuts here and there. Then I started actually reading, you know, the information before me, and all the tiers stated over 20 moving parts, which I'm guessing is their, what they, well, what they call the 22 point system. And when I found this video, oh yeah, that's when everything started to click for me. It kind of veers away from the 22 point system. It doesn't seem to have biceps yet. The elbows are only single with a swivel underneath. The wrists have been converted from that kind of ball joint to an actual hinge with a swivel on it. The hips are still stuffed under the crotch piece but I'm sure those are articulated too. And then it shows there's an ab joint going up into the torso, but the torso is still a full solid piece. I think the ideas for this line was, <laughs> they were still finalizing things, I think. So the quickest thing to do was to take that original digital render sculpt, blow it apart, show the joints, and then they're gonna be tweaking and refining it. Hopefully we'll see that before the end of the Kickstarter with some tweaks or whatever. Hopefully, I, I like that wrist setup. Don't care much for the elbows like that. Definitely need biceps. Like I said, I had my doubts about the timing of this with everything that's going on, but the $100,000 goal was reached in 12 minutes. 12 minutes. You can't argue with that. The only other point I'm seeing a lot online is why is an established toy company going to Kickstarter to try to get toys out? Why doesn't he just pay for tooling, make them himself, try to sell it through the website or to stores afterwards. As he's proven several times over, Todd's not in the business of losing money. If a line isn't working, they stop. If it is working, they make more. It took many years, but he finally saw the merits of articulation and started putting it into various lines. If they had done this on the McFarlane Toys site and put a goal and a thermometer and you have to reach this or we don't make anything, isn't that the same thing, really? I understand people not wanting their money tied up into things, but for me, it's like, oh, this is paid for. All I gotta do is wait, that's it. And with it being both Kickstarter 
and McFarlane toys, I feel like there's a level of confidence that some people may not feel towards other Kickstarter campaigns. Plus, on McFarlane's side, there is no risk. <laughs> yeah, well, paid for the prototype, still working on that. But there's no tooling cut, that which is a huge expense. The factories haven't been put into production yet. It's like, hey, here's a concept. Do you all want it? And apparently we want it, so we go from here. Not to mention the exposure of big toy company goes to Kickstarter to make toys. As he explains in the video, stores didn't want to carry a comic spawn line, so he's selling directly to us. Kickstarter's just an avenue for that. In fact, Kickstarter's set up to do that. Why pay people to come in and update your website and make sure it doesn't crash when people are ordering and everything else, when you can just, everything's right there. Just log into Kickstarter, pay your money, wait for your toy. And last time I looked, which was an hour ago, it was nearing a million dollars. So, again, you can't argue with that. You have a little time to think about it though. There's 28 more days, 27, 28 days left on the campaign. So, it's already funded. It's a done deal. Even though the release date for the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian The Child, which technically, when I wrote this down, it was Star Wars The Black Series, The Mandalorian, The Child, which makes me just lose all concept of what the means. It's like saying your name over and over and over and over until it just sounds like gibberish. Anyway, the asset was originally set to release May 4th, well, for obvious reasons, but on the Hasbro Pulse site, it's been pushed back to June 1st. But this week on eBay, we saw what looks like the final product for The Child or whatever. <laughs> Baby Yoda. If you remember back to Toy Fair, there were several samples of this in the booth. It was sitting inside like a retail tray and it kind of looked like, you know, hey, just take one for, you know, as you go. But they wouldn't let you do that because I asked twice, maybe three times. But seeing it with the inner tray and everything laid out and all smooth and stuff and the figure itself along with a cup, a frog, and then the gear shift for the Razor's Crest. Yeah, I'm ready. $10 and I'm just gonna say it's coming out in the upcoming months. We all know Hasbro loves their glamour shots for the Marvel Legends line. And even though the Black Widow Crimson Dynamo wave is hitting for some, some of you already have it. For those of us who don't have it yet, all we can do is stare at these new pictures until we're blessed with plastic goodness. Winter Soldier has a lot of familiarity to it. It's reusing some parts, but from what I can remember, I need to dig that toy out. I do think this is an upgrade. The one from the Toys R Us 2 pack? <laughs> That's been a long time. Spy Master is one of those characters I don't actually remember reading in the comics, but he was a staple of my morning routine back when I was a kid. Serial, official Marvel handbook, read through cover to cover, page to page, all the words. For years, I went through and, oh, uh, I finished the series, back to issue one. And while it's 90% blank body painted, it's awesome that Hasbro actually added some sculpt to the head. <laughs> Didn't have to, could have just painted that detail, but hey, not complaining. I'm on the fence with crossbones, just a little. Don't get me wrong, I'm still getting it because I want to build the build a figure. And once I get this in hand, it'll be like, woo! comic crossbones there's a lot of wooing today Woo! but i think i've gotten so used to his tactical vest look with the baggy pants and such that the comic look kind of throws me off now but the crossbones we already have is on such an outdated body i don't even mind or oh oh could do some mix and matching and stuff maybe 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 for the black widow movie figures in this wave i love the look of red guardian but that head has to go it's a shame that hasbro has to work with initial concept art or early pictures in order to get the figures made for the movie release only to have the movie push back to later in the year so you get this out and red guardian's probably one of those characters we're not going to see again in a two-pack or whatever thankfully i'm already seeing replacement heads pop up on ebay and facebook both masked and unmasked, so there's already options out there. Play day! I've talked several times about the movie Taskmaster and how it didn't click for me at first until I realized, oh, it's a natural progression from comic book Taskmaster to Udon Taskmaster and then to this. It's a mix of both. It's got that tactical look, but it mixes in the blues and the oranges and the whites. And now I need the MCU Barney Toastmaster. Yelena is perfectly fine. I'll probably be more invested once I see the movie, but right now it just looks like, well, there's a Black Widow with a different head. But it wasn't until these pictures that I realized, oh, 
Is she wearing Black Widow's vest from Infinity War? Doesn't this movie come before that? Interesting. Hmm. And then for Black Widow herself, I find myself really, really liking the mix of gray and black. It's a nifty change from what we usually see, where it's just a full black costume, and she kind of just blends into the background of your display, which I know, being a super spy, <laughs> the character-wise, that makes complete sense, but display-wise, the, the contrast brings it out a little bit. I think I also love the gold bracers and bits on her belt. And then the Build-A-Figure Crimson Dynamo. I know this isn't what we usually picture when we think, oh, Crimson Dynamo. Apparently this look was in a miniseries or, or short-lived in the comics, but like most things presented to me in action figure form, it's growing on me. It's big, it's bulky, it's worn, it's got kind of a steampunkish look to it. And the green glowy rods on the forearms, I don't know, that may be my favorite thing of this whole series, and I, I don't know why, just because, it, it, it's neat. Most of all, it makes me want to build them, and that puts any doubts I had about any of the single figures to rest completely. I, I need this whole series. Congratulations to everybody who already has these. But to those of us who don't, good luck. <laughs> Hopefully pre-orders come in soon. With everything going on currently, I've lost track of dates. So I'd completely forgotten that, at least when it comes to Hasbro, that this week was Marvel Monday. A new fan channel exclusive Marvel Legends Mysterio was announced, and like I always say about the fan channel stuff, this is a perfect entry there. It's easy to get if you missed out on the Mysterio from the Lizard Wave, or you like the different colors here, or, or you just want another Mysterio to use as a clone, or whatever. It, here it is. It's for you. But if you're perfectly happy with that first release, and do not care about this, no harm, no foul. You don't have to get it. Not for you. Everyone's happy, right? Right? There's no claims of lazy ass Hasbro and repaint. I never watched the Spider-Man animated series, but some are saying this was based on that. It's also a look from the comics with the gold gauntlets and the lighter green. And hmm, what else was there? Oh, a bunch of pre-Legends figures also sported this look. But the card back is retro inspired, which fits right in with the upcoming Spider-Man series. So that's cool too. Plus it's a retro card. And I need to, I need that's just another reason for us suckers who can't resist that nostalgia tug to put these on pre-order. Even if you don't need the material, you need the card. Oh, and this time around the dome is foggy, which was a common complaint about that first one that you could see the head underneath. So will this be the same head underneath? Who knows, but I like that it's less translucent. $20 should arrive in October. And now a little update on articulated icons from Foosh founder and CEO Pablo Lobo. Articulated icon spring summer 20 collection is still on target for delivery in June, maybe July, definitely the summer. We made a change to the packaging design, specifically on the back. Instead of having the items and all the accessories, we've decided to show off the figures and we have a large picture of the item in the box and then four small pictures of the items in the collection. If you want to see that full video, you can check that out over on his channel. Or if you want to see more of him on this channel, let me know. And that's it for this week. Not a lot, but a lot to talk about. It's kind of, uh, <laughs> it's kind of weird. If you're interested in seeing more pictures without me all in front of it, more information, link to pre-orders, that'll all be posted on the Food Front page at noon on Saturday. There's tons of us that are spending a lot more time at home right now, and it's easy to get a little bit, especially when it comes to, you know, fighting on the internet or making shitty comments on YouTube. Let's try to think about what we're saying before fingers go to keyboard. You know what I mean? I come across a lot of comments lately that could be worded a little bit different, probably a little bit nicer. Let's try to be nice to each other. I love you. You love me. We're a big happy family. But if you enjoyed this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the Foosh. And hopefully sometime soon at conventions and Star Wars Celebration, San Diego Comic Con, and New York, and wherever else. Mm.